the original OnePlus One and the OnePlus Two were phenomenal phones, but a few issues kept them from being the flagship killers I really wanted them to be. As it turns out though, third time might really be the charm. I've spent a week playing with the OnePlus Three, and in just about every way that matters, this is the phone that represents OnePlus at their best. It's a phenomenal device, so let's take a closer look. Let's talk about build quality first, and OnePlus did not let us down here. Now, instead of a plastic back with a sandstone finish, what we have now is a unibody aluminum design, which feels absolutely incredible. Everyone I've shown this to, or anyone who has seen the device, has thought this was an HTC phone, and if you've looked at the HTC 10 recently, you know that's actually quite a compliment. It's also really thin too. At 7.35 millimeters thick, this is one of the thinnest flagships I've used in recent memory. And more importantly, that slim waistline helps keep the phone feel really nice and comfortable, even though it's roughly the same size as the Galaxy Note 5. What's inside the OnePlus 3 is pretty impressive too. We're looking at one of Qualcomm's Snapdragon 820 chipsets, which is, yes, the same chip that we've seen in just about every flagship Android phone this year. What's more impressive is we've got six gigabytes of RAM to go with it. That's a little insane. We've seen a couple smartphones from China aspire to the same thing, but I'm glad we've got this here and now. And this time we also have NFC, which was noticeably absent from the OnePlus 2 last year. Android Pay fans can finally go out and make their payments with their OnePlus devices and feel great about it. Rounding out the internals, is a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is neither the best nor the worst we've seen in a modern flagship smartphone, but it's enough to give me a pretty consistent day and a half of use before having to recharge. The biggest sticking point here is probably going to be storage, because you have 64 gigabytes that come inside the device itself, and no way to expand on that. For a company that implores us to never settle, they kind of settled on this one. It would have been great to have an expandable memory slot, or at least the option to buy a phone with 128 gigabytes of storage. On the flip side though, in the tiny tray where a micro SD card might be expected to go, we actually have a second nano SIM slot. So the OnePlus 3 is actually kind of a tremendous travel device. Trying to build a phone this nice and this cheap is an exercise in compromise, and nowhere is that more apparent than the 5.5 inch 1080p display up front. Text is crisp and bright and so are colors. Make no mistake, this is a great screen. The screen's pretty bright and readable, especially in direct sunlight, although in situations like this where it's kind of cloudy, you'll probably notice a lot of reflections like the ones you're seeing right now. Other people might bemoan the lack of a Quad HD display, but I don't really miss it. I think this was the right trade-off to make. I also need to call out the fingerprint sensor slash home button underneath the display. On the OnePlus 2, it was a little slow, it was a little sluggish, and it took a little extra force to kind of get where I was going. That's fortunately no longer the case. It takes the right amount of pressure, the sensitivity is there, and it works really, really nicely. If you haven't used a OnePlus device before, one of the biggest selling points is what the company calls Oxygen OS, which is really just, in this case, a slightly modified version of Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. Unless you know where to look, this will feel almost completely stock, which is personally the way I like it. Still, there are a couple things you should be aware of. If you enable a feature called the shelf, for example, you'll be able to swipe to the right from your home screen and see not only the time and weather, but frequently used apps and memos you might want to save for yourself. Dig in a little deeper though and you'll find some more fun stuff to play with, like night mode, which you can access from the notification shade. As the name sort of implies, it tries to reduce eye strain at night by making your screen kind of orange. You can also draw gestures on the screen while it's off to launch certain functions, like drawing an O, for example, brings up the camera, and drawing a V brings up a flashlight. That's really what I enjoy about Oxygen OS, it's kind of what you make of it. If you want a traditional stock Android experience, then it's right there for you, but if you look a little closer, you'll find a lot of customization and neat features to help you along. Around the back is a 16 megapixel camera with a sensor sourced from Sony, and while you don't have to say that three times fast, it is pretty common practice these days. More importantly, it's a clear improvement over the 13 megapixel camera we got on the OnePlus 2 last year. Colors are punchy and bright, and there's a lot of detail to be found even if you're shooting in full auto like I usually do. There is, however, a full manual mode if you prefer to get really tight control over your photography. That mode, by the way, outputs full raw image files, and it's helped by the fact that we've got both optical image stabilization and phase detect autofocus. I gotta tell you though, as nice as these photos are, they're not quite as good as what we've seen from the cream of the Android photography crop. If the single most important factor for you is an incredible camera, then go for something like the Galaxy S7. Otherwise, the OnePlus 3 is still a really strong competitor. At the end of the day, I'm really, really impressed with what OnePlus brought to the table here. To think we'd have this level of performance and this level of build quality in a device that's only $399, that, that wouldn't have made sense just a few years ago. And yet here we are. The OnePlus 3 is obviously not a perfect device, but I'm still kind of blown away at how little I have to complain about this thing. This thing obviously won't be for everybody, but if you're searching for flagship power and don't want to pay flagship prices, well, your search should start right here.